Good morning. Good morning. Can you hear me? Good to hear. Okay. Uh, I'm Alex Safalor. Uh, this was my second trip to Hollywood, South Carolina. And on this trip, I think I learned and experienced a ton this time. Um, I learned that banging nails when trying to drive them into wood is one of the most frustrating things ever. I found out how much sweat I can make. I learned that coffee is an amazing thing, and having four cups of it can make you last through the night. <laughs> and that next time I pack for this trip, I'll have to make sure I pack enough shorts so I don't have to rewear one on the last day. Um, but all jokes aside, this trip taught me that people in America are living in conditions which many could consider third world almost, and that poverty like this is much closer to home than I originally thought. These people, like Miss Clara, the person who we were helping the, with this trip, is living, are living with the bare minimum and are grateful for little things like watermelon, a fruit. I never left the work site angry or crabby. I left thinking it was over too fast and that I need to do more. This trip was an amazing experience with great people and a great environment, and I cannot wait to go next year. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, so this past week, I was able to go on my first missions trip to Hollywood, South Carolina. Um, originally, I wasn't going to be able to go because every year I go to wrestling camp, and it always lies in the same week, but my friends talked me into going this year, but I still wasn't too sure. Like, I was hesitant to go, and I didn't know what it was going to be like. Um, and I really felt this way until about the week leading up to it, and that's when I started to get excited to go. So the first day we were on the work site, we got to see the house and meet the homeowner who was Miss Clara. Um, she was one of the nicest uh, woman that you will ever meet and she deserved more than she had so that was when I realized that we really needed to work hard to fix her house up. Um, as the week went on the trip grew on me and I just loved it more and more every day and by the end I just loved it all being able to help people, um, meeting new people from church in Hanover and being with friends who I've known a lot of them my whole life and I never thought I could be more get closer to them, but during this trip, I did. Um, I learned a lot from the leaders as far as construction goes, but one of the major things I learned was that how fortunate we really are, and we don't really think about that every day, but people like Miss Clara have to think about that every day, um, when they're gonna have their next meal. Like, we have a roof over our head, her roof leaked, so we were lucky to be able to fix that up. Um, looking back, I'm sure I made the right decision to go on the trip, and I wouldn't change it, and I can't wait to do it all again next year. Thank you. Good morning again. So uh, this was my first missions trip that I've ever been on before, and before I get on with uh, how I, you know, felt going through this and how much I enjoyed it. I just wanted to say that uh, I jumped on the train for this missions trip really last minute, maybe about a week before we were supposed to leave. Uh, and I hadn't made up the money that everybody else had made to go. But somebody anonymously uh, paid for my trip for me. So I don't know who it was, but I just want to say thank you. Uh, but with our trip down to South Carolina, it was fantastic to go with this group of people, and like everyone before me has said, the lady that we are helping, Miss Clara, definitely deserved what we did and even more. That's why we keep going down and doing what we do. And she definitely uh, needed our help, and I think we did everything that we could with the time available. We only had a week, and I think we all wish we had more time. Uh, and like Alex said before me, uh, she said one of her favorite things uh, was watermelon. And she didn't have enough money this summer to afford a watermelon. And I don't really think that's anything that we really have to think about at all. I think that's something that we can all just go out and buy a watermelon. But she's not quite able to do that. She doesn't have the money. Uh, she's spending all of her money trying to just barely get by. She has to take care of her son that lives with her. 
and she was so happy when we went down there to help. It just really showed me why we've been doing this for as long as we do it. She has so much spirit, and she just has so much energy. She actually prayed with us. She was praying for us when we got down there at first, and that was really cool, uh, just being down there. It's a whole different culture down there, um, and it was enjoying. It was joy that really kept me going, the joy on her face, the joy that I saw in all of my friends. That's what kept me going in those hot, humid days, always trying to get more work done, always trying to help everybody around me. Uh, and what I really took back from that is realizing that people have so much less than what we have. And I think as good Christians, something we have to do is to give back to our community, give back to other people, and just try to help everybody live a little bit better. youth leaders for the Youth Outreach Leadership Program, our organization. Um, and uh, you guys are part of the prayer chain. I was the girl who was filling the ear boxes with our daily shenanigans. Um, this was my fourth and sadly probably last trip with Yellow because I'll be heading off to college in the fall. But for anyone who has gone on multiple trips, you will know that every year is different. We normally have a different house we're working on, different residents, even do different groups of people going. I used to describe this trip as magic. <laughs> that this group of high schoolers and a handful of adults raise all this money in order to give up a week of their summer vacation go down and go down to the south and have the sun beat down on them all day or while they are working on building or rebuilding a home for a complete stranger. With most teenagers, it's nearly impossible to get them to clean the room. And here are 25 working side by side with people that they possibly only met a day or two before sweat pouring down their backs, but smiles on their faces. I now realize that it's not magic, but it's God working through us, bringing us together into this place to not only touch the lives of people that we're helping, but also have them touch ours, allowing us to extend their family in the process. Now, I know that this all sounds super cliche, but I suppose cliches are what they are, because more often than not, they're very true. This year, we worked on the home of a wonderful lady named Miss Clara. That first morning, as soon as we stepped off the bus, she went around and hugged and kissed every person. She herded us, herded us all up with incredible energy and enthusiasm for someone her age and insisted on praying for everyone before we went to work. Miss Clara's faith and love is so powerful, it just pours out of her. And I soon found out that even if you're a grumpy after a long, hot day of work, it's impossible to talk to her and not smile. She's remained so strong in her beliefs, even after being dealt such a hard hand in life, before we left, she gave us her address, asking if we would write, and pulling out papers from her pocket that had clearly been unfolded and refolded many times from multiple readings. They were letters from mission groups that from before has had sent her, and she kept at her side every day. She was so incredibly grateful, thinking us over and over again, and having to have her family physically pull her away because she didn't want to stop talking to us so, she, so that she could go home. Since my first mission trip, this has been the highlight of my year and people like Miss Clara are the reason why. She showed me that no matter what happens, God is always watching out for you, and that through faith and love, happiness will soon follow. Throughout the week, the quote, love every leaf, every ray of light, was played over and over in my head. In it being my last year, I realized how much I love that place. Love my missions family, love all of you guys. You weren't physically there with us, and how much I'll miss it all. Thank you for everyone who is either working with us or sending us your thoughts and prayers throughout the week. This trip instills such a passion in each person who goes on it. And there's really no way to truly understand what we are all rambling on about until you go and experience it yourself. In just four years, it has changed my life in so many ways. And I can't thank it or you all enough. Hallelujah.
I think uh, it's absolutely appropriate that um, we give a round of applause to our missions team. I don't think Father Ben knows it yet, but I'm asking for the day off tomorrow. <laughs> um, I just wanted to take a moment to talk firsthand about my experience on the mission trip since it was my first mission trip at St. James. Um, in 10 years plus of leading mission trips, I have seen some of the hardest working youth um, this week. And I am totally impressed by all of you and you should be impressed by them. This year, um, this mission trip marks one year of ministry for me at St. James. Um, I came right after this trip last year and I wanted to take a moment to thank everybody um, for your support, for continuously making me feel welcome in this community and more so to this group of teens who welcomed me into their community this week. Um, from the first night we got to the mission trip, I decided to try something different. I spent a week at Shrymont and I had practiced my guitar a little bit and I thought, let's just go for it, let's sing. And uh, the first night went terribly wrong. Um, the boys, I don't think, wanted their friends to see them sing, so they would put their heads down, turn, didn't want anybody to see their mouth moving. Um, by Tuesday night, they had learned one song so well, they stood up in front of a group of complete strangers and sang their hearts out. Um, and we're all going to sing it right now. Are you ready? No. <laughs> This group talks so much about Miss Clara, the resident of the house that we were staying at, and she taught us so much this week, just as much as we taught each other. But she taught us that somebody with so little could still have so much faith. And that was an example that I think definitely pushed us through our time there. Um, this week, I built stronger relationships with those of you that I previously had relationships with. I built new relationships with people um, I was covered in baby powder um, by a wonderful nurse who uh, supported us throughout the week. But I just wanted to say thank you again to all of those of you that supported us, uh, whether it was financially supporting us, whether it was being part of the prayer team while we were there. Um, those prayers uh, were definitely appreciated and at times needed. Um, but thank you again so, so much for your continuous support of this group of kids and my ministry that I get to have with them. So thank you.